Bum, 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 bum. Hey, what's going on, guys? KL Belvin here. I think my camera. Let me clean that up a little bit. What's going on, guys? Um, <laughs> yo, it's funny when you watch a scope. Shout out to my man Otis Bellinger when <clears throat> somebody does a scope that makes you wish you wasn't driving. And actually, I'm not driving. Now. I had to pull over. Hey, Tanil, Miss Jackson, how are you? Um, <laughs> when he started talking about horrible bosses, let me tell you something. Yes, go thank your horrible bosses. Yes. Don't walk in, say nothing to them, but thank them mentally, thank them spiritually, because horrible bosses will push you to levels that you have not experienced. They will make you create when you didn't think that you could create. They will make you think of escape plans that you didn't even know existed, and it will move you to higher levels if you allow it, unless you decide to fold up and let your horrible boss just have their way with you. Oh, okay, cool, glad to hear. And when he said horrible bosses, <clears throat> Lord, ah, oh, man, let me tell you something. I definitely have a testimony because when you work for the New York City Department of Education, it is very difficult because everything could be lovely and principles change and all of a sudden you're in hell and you can't necessarily get out of that hell right away. So sometimes you got to put in a whole year <clears throat> and just fight. And sometimes you may not have done anything wrong. I just move my car back here. There we go. Now I was driving. Now I'm not. Um, you may not have done anything wrong, but you just have to deal with it. Uh, my first eight years was wonderful. Principal left, new principal came in, and it was hell. But I can honestly say the thing that I definitely have to co-sign um, with Otis about is a very difficult boss will move you to another level that you didn't think you could get to. Because once they take your comfort level from you, to get away from that person without being fired, you become strategic. You start to try to figure out ways to get yourself the same pay, different position, whatever it is. All of a sudden you will realize that you were into things that you didn't even know you could be into because you want to get away from this boss. Now, let me also talk about the role faith plays in this. If you are a man or woman of faith, and you know you have not done anything wrong and you know you have not done anything illegal and you just got somebody that's just grinding your gears because they don't like you, they don't like what you stand for, they don't even like the way you look, whatever. Don't worry. I'm telling you right now, don't worry. I'm telling you right now, just be you, don't stress. I have had quite a few principals come at me because I'm not just gonna fall in line because you say fall in line. I'm here to protect kids. I'm here to teach kids. I'm here to work with kids. I'm not worried about the adults. I'm not worried about political agendas. I'm not worried about whatever. I'm here to work with children. So, no, I'm not going to be the biggest pom-pom wa waiver for other teachers. I'm not going to be, I'm definitely not going to be a pom-pom waiver for principals. I am here to work with a, young adults to get them to understand their potential. Now, if you want to help me do that, no problem. But you're not going to get me to just say whatever because that's what you want me to do. Because I'm not worried about it. You want to take the money? Go ahead. Take your best shot. You want to try to fire me? Take your best shot. I have found... Oh, hell no, I'm not. <laughs> man, listen. No, I'm definitely not a yes man. Um, the thing is, the one thing I have found, this is my secret. Because when other people have gotten fired or quit or whatever, here's my secret. Be ultra professional. Be ultra professional. You supposed to be at eight, be there at 745. They tell you to teach five classes, don't complain. Teach the five classes, that's part of your contract. You do everything that you are assigned to do within your contract. And then learn to stand on no's. Mr. Belvin, can you stay a little bit later? No. Mr. Belvin, I would like, I hear what you're saying, I cannot. But Mr. Belvin, we have so much to do. You have so much to do. I'm not staying. And understand that when you get, when you say no to bosses that don't like you, oh yes, they're going to try to give you the business. Remain professional. Stay professional. Do not whine. That's the first thing. Stop. 
Because you don't know who you're whining to and you don't know what they're running back to say about you. Close your mouth. Start praying. Pray for that person if you know you've done nothing to them. Say, Lord, I don't know what I did to him, but so you work it out. I'm just going to be the ultimate perfection. <clears throat> I'm going to be everything that I can be and everything I'm supposed to be. Second, when you look for other employment, be calm. Don't be frantic because then you'll sign on to a gig that may be worse than the gig that you have. Now, watch your surroundings. Limit your friend base. And you shouldn't have that many friends at work anyway. This is work. You can be friendly. We ain't friends. And I think a lot of people get that twisted. I don't have a lot of friends at work. I, hell, I don't have no friends at work. I have a lot of people I'm friendly with. You're not my friend if you don't even know my middle name. You're not my friend if you ain't never been to my house and had dinner. You ain't my friend unless you've been through struggles with me. We work together. And yes, we put in a lot of hours in at work. But you ain't my friend if you ain't never been to my Kristen, I ain't been your Kristen, I ain't been to your wedding, you, I, you ain't been to mine, whatever. We're not friends because every day we come to the same place. We are coming to the same place because we have the same thought in mind. I am going to work, they are going to pay me, I am hoping to be successful at what I do. We're not friends. And I don't get offended by telling people that. Because I'm going to ask you this if you're watching this. How many of those people, if you have left that job, got fired from that job or whatever, called you and said, your bill's paid? Need money? Now, when you got a horrible boss that's coming at you, by remaining professional, it makes it more difficult for them to try to do you dirty. Because now they have to try to make stuff up. And it's very hard for stuff that's made up to stick. <clears throat> now, don't get it twisted. Sometimes you may have to go. Sometimes you may have to go, this is it, I can't stay here. And then you go. But I have had five, five principals come after my license because I wasn't cool with what they wanted. Five. All five are no longer in the New York City school system. I have had five principals come after my license because they just didn't like the position that I had taken in their school. Okay. I have not missed a check in the over 17 years in the Department of Education. Two years private school before that. I actually add to that six. I almost forgot the principal from the private school. They had to pay me almost $5,000 for their hiccup. And the reason why I can say that is because when I know I've not done anything, yeah, I'll move on to the next spot. But you can come like, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to do what you hired me to do. I'm going to do what the job calls for me to do. And if I want to do more, it is because I choose to. I have no problem with getting up in the middle of a meeting. If the meeting is supposed to be over at five minutes to three, and that is how much time I am contractually to give, I get up and say good night. I wouldn't care if the principal is speaking at that moment. I'm not going to give you more time when I know you're trying to do me dirty because I'm worried about how people are going to take it or you don't think it's courteous. I don't think it's courteous that you're wasting my time that I can spend with my family. No. So, yes, be strong on what you do, but be professional and do not worry about a horrible boss because all of a sudden you will see it is the position that I am in right now at the school that I'm at and the school that I'm at is wonderful was due to a horrible boss last year who decided she wanted to push me out of her building. She did me a blessing. She did not even realize she was doing the Lord's work and put me in a place that I just, I couldn't even erode it. I couldn't have wrote this this way. And I am loving what I do. I'm almost tempted to, to hold off on moving from Delaware to stay here, but my, my, my decision is made. But I'm just happy that I landed in a place where my talents are appreciated. Wouldn't have happened if she didn't push me in that direction. So I thank her. Am I going to write her and thank her? No. Am I going to be disrespectful and call her and say, Yo, I appreciate what you know? Internally, you thank her. Because sometimes, no, not sometimes. What's meant for evil will be to someone's good. Trust that. Trust that. Now, if you're enjoying this, how come you're not sharing it? Where's the hearts? Come on now. Let's go. Let's get a hard party started over here. 
Got people just laying back, chilling. There, there we go. I was wondering what happened. Thought your touch screens froze up or something like that. Let's go. But seriously, and I know the frustration of when you're working a hard eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. All things work for good. Exactly. Oh, Miss Jackson, I have not forgotten. I'm just touching up and making some changes to lukewarm saying I do not want to send you flawed books. So as soon as I touch things up and make the changes, I will send you the copies to be positioned in your store. So I definitely appreciate it. And anyone that's on this scope, if you're in the Chicago area, check out APS Books and more. Uh, I forgot. I know it's on Cicero. Um, post up your um, post up the store address, uh, Miss Jackson. But definitely if you're in Chicago, check out APS Books and more. If you're on Facebook, check out APS Books and more. Check out my sister, Tennille Jackson. Make sure you support her. She stepped out on faith and created her own bookstore. And Lord knows we do not have enough independent bookstores that's looking out after the independent author. She even took it one step further and said, I'm not even going to carry certain works in my store because she wanted the inspiration, the uplifting, the stuff that she thought was positive. 7601 St. Cicero. I know it's Cicero. 7601 South Cicero in Chicago. Please check her out. Ford City Mall, definitely check her out. APS Books and more. I'm working on trying to come to Chicago in July. And if I do, I will definitely be doing a signing because I cannot wait to meet my sister. Our books at Braven Publishing are there. The only bookstore that I have my books at is hers. And I'm going to tell you why. She is independently owned and I love that she is a woman of faith and I feel comfortable having my books there. And you know what? She pays you when she says she's going to pay you. She sticks to her agreements. And this is the type of young lady that you need to get behind. So you guys in the scope, please share this. Share this with your friends. Share this with your followers because we have to support each other. And let me tell you something. She is a perfect example of why we can't allow horrible bosses to get inside our heads. Because sometimes you just got to step out on faith and create would I be so kind to rap to us? Yeah, check this out. My new hit single is called Block Party. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but definitely share this. Um, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I get a kick out of some of these cats here, man. And I know it's my European cats, man. Because it's nighttime over there. They ain't got nothing else to do. But anyway, guys, definitely. Do not allow horrible bosses to... Um, to get you so out of pocket or even get you down. Don't do it. Take that and become more of what you can be. Don't stay at a job because you feel you have to. You do not have to. There's always another level that you can reach to with, with prayer, with God, and a sincere effort. You can get there. You can make things happen you didn't even think possible. Now, that doesn't mean it's gonna be easier. Doesn't mean that you may make the same money. But if you put the effort in it and you pray about it and you believe it's what God wants you to do, trust me, it'll be successful. You'll be okay. I'm stepping out on faith come June and I'm moving to a whole nother state. I haven't even locked in the position yet. But I'm going because I know it's what the Lord wants me to do. So I'm going to trust that the Lord is going to make some things happen. Actually, I just got word from my lovely wife today that um, she's up for a position in Delaware that she applied for. So like I said, door, the Lord is going to open up doors. And I just heard from um, one of the realtors had hit me back today about um, some property and some apartments that we were looking at. So the idea is the Lord's going to make a way. You can't worry. You have to go and make it happen. And you don't stay on a job and let it allow you to get you to be sick or whatever. Oh my God, the stress. No, no one should get you so stressed that you can't function. You got to step out on faith and you thank your horrible bosses for making it uncomfortable for you because you know what? Real question is why do you stay? Not that they're horrible. Not that what did I do to make them dislike me? So what? So what they dislike you? So what you didn't do nothing to cause them to treat you like this? You know what? There's people like that in the world. There's people that get up in the morning and their life is not complete unless they can run somebody down. But you know what? No one said you got to stand there and get run over. No one said you got to stand there and take it. So the question becomes, why haven't you left? And if it's about money, well, then money's your God. Don't get mad. Your God, if money's your God, this is the penance that you pay for having a God like that. Okay. 
You ain't got to agree with me. Because if you're staying, why are you staying? If you're saying the job is horrible, the boss is making it so uncomfortable, I just don't like being here. How come you ain't walk out the door? Well, you don't understand. I got certain responsibilities and I got certain things I got to take care of. Okay, then. Then figure out your escape and make it work for you on what you like, on what you need and what you need to do. You know how much money you need to take care of your responsibilities? And I guarantee you, and I've sat with a lot of folks, most of us live past the, the amounts that we really need. So it's really about what we like, not what we need. And we're going to be talking about finances tonight. So if you want to check out tonight, Regina Poole at 8 o'clock, Otis Bellinger at 830. I'm coming on at 9, back to back to back. We're going to be discussing finances. So you definitely need to tune in um, tonight on Periscope, 8 o'clock, 830 and 9 o'clock, discussing finances. And I have not said, and I apologize, that Wayne State University, June 4th, is going to be on fire because that same trio, hosting by Otis Bellinger. Regina Poole and myself will be there speaking on building better relationships, June 4th at Wayne State University. The same trio that you're going to see tonight discussing finances are going to be the same trio doing it big in the D. Because it's about trying to restore people, build people, and make people see things in a better way that can help them. It's about helping others. But when you start to talk about horrible bosses, why do you come home and bring that stress to your house? Why do you allow somebody else to make you feel a certain way that when you come home, your family has to deal with that? I work with a brother. His blood pressure was so high that the only way he found out it was by accident. By accident, a principal, the principal that we had was so negative at the time that she had just said, you know what? She gave him the day off and he just left. OK, at least he got paid. But he was like, I'm doing lead this job. I'm going to do whatever. He was taking his wife to the doctor. The doctor said, I want to take a look at you because you're not looking too good. Took his blood pressure. The man's blood pressure was close to stroke level. And he said, how do, how do you you don't feel uncomfortable? He said, hey, listen, I got work to do. You got work to do. You're about to kill yourself. I look like the guy from Fresh Prince. Yes, I do. Now, the real question is whatever you're going to say next is going to get you blocked. So think about it because that didn't add to the conversation. Don't waste my time. Anyway, now, so what happened? By accident. By accident. He's, he, and he was lucky enough to find out that his blood pressure was high enough and then took medication um, to get it down. But I'm saying... We can't allow work. Work serves a purpose. It pays you for what you do. Or if it's your dream job, fine. But once someone starts to make you so uncomfortable that you are starting to feel and become negative, then you gotta let it go and do it in another form or fashion. Do it somewhere else. Maybe this ain't the state. Maybe it might be the dream job, wrong state. Dream job, wrong city. I am an educator. First of all, I am a, a good, great question. I am an author, poet, educator, publisher, mentor, speaker, husband, father, and man of God. I wear many a hat and I tie all my hats together. That's a lot of jobs and I love them all. And I'm a graduate student. I'm working on my second master's degree as we speak. So yes, I'm not allowing anyone to hold me in any position. Why are you moaning then? Oh, there you go. See, that, this is what I'm moaning about. I'm moaning about that block feature. I got so excited about hitting that block button because I knew you jump into that hole. That's why I'm moaning. Next. But yes, you have to actually thank your horrible boy. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, listen, he, 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 would come. he was just trying to figure out what he could do. He was like, I know he's going to block me. I got to try to figure it in. I ain't going to give him a chance to go the sexual route. I'll block them all. But you have to, when looking at your horrible bosses, they're not horrible. They're actually gifts. Because a horrible boss will really cause you to lock in if this is the job for you. A horrible boss will cause you to rethink your current course of action. A horrible boss will cause you to go home and maybe rekindle a relationship with your significant other because you might need another set 
of eyes and thoughts on things. A horrible boss will, will help you get your writing together because if you got to write memos to return and a horrible boss will get your butt out of bed early. A horrible boss will make sure that you're documenting everything. A horrible boss will make you watch your mouth when who you're around because you don't know what might go back to him. A horrible boss will keep you on point of doing the job. So they're really not that horrible. The real question becomes, what are you still doing there? Now, if you're digging in and you say, this is what I created, this is my job, I'm not letting nobody run me off my job, no problem. Well, then you don't have a horrible boss, you just have a boss. And they're gonna be what they're gonna be and you're gonna fight back with what you do until one gives. And it always gives. Either they'll get walked out the building and fired or you'll walk out or you'll get fired. But it's gonna give, because very rarely does that type of negativity coexist somewhere. Now, sometimes y'all can squeeze in a good 10, 15 years, y'all just, he don't like me, she don't like, and they just realize that you're good for the position, they haven't found a way to replace you. But don't ever, don't ever allow your head to get swollen and think you cannot be replaced. Don't do that. Because the minute you get comfortable, that horrible boss is still the horrible boss. But also remember that it can be physically draining. Physically draining trying to be perfect. Physically frustrating to try to make sure that you didn't, did I do this, did I do that? Life's not about that. If work is to pay the bills, then it ain't supposed to be that stressful. Now, unless you got lives in the balance of what you do, you're an air traffic controller, um, you're an ambulance, an EMT, or a doctor, or a surgeon, somewhere where if you make mistakes, someone dies instantly, the stress from that alone is difficult. But someone else attempting to apply stress to you, this is also why you have to create options. Nurse, I'm sorry, yes, nurses too. Grew up in a family of nurses, mom, grandmother, and sister, all nurses, RNs. So when you're in a job where mistakes can cost somebody their lives, you definitely don't want to stay somewhere where the stress level increases to the point that you actually start to make those mistakes. Because then when those mistakes are made, you might not be able to come back from those. You may lose the dream job and never be able to do it again. So again, look in the mirror and ask yourself, why am I here? Is it worth it? And if it's not worth it, walk the hell away. Now, I'm not saying walk out tomorrow. I ain't saying run up into your horrible boss's office and say the hell with you and you walk out and you ain't got no plan. The idea is plan your escape. Sit down and discuss what's your out. How much time are you giving yourself? And if it's about going back to school, well then okay. You gotta deal with this horrible boss for two years if it's your, a year and a half, two years if it's your master's degree. Four years or three and a half years if it's your bachelor's degree. If it's a certificate, whatever amount of time. You have to decide. Look at it like a prison sentence. Look, I got two years left on this sentence. You do it. People do it every day. Plan your exit. Close your mouth and say, you know what? I'm not even telling anyone my plan because if people believe or find out about your plan, they'll try to intensify the blocking. They'll try to intensify the hate. Don't let it happen. But listen, guys, I got a business phone call to make. My name is KL Belvin. I am on Facebook, Twitter. Actually, I'm everywhere. Um, I pretty much check everything now and then, but just look for KL Belvin. You want to know more about me? Google KL Belvin. You'll see a lot of things. You're welcome that my wife and I do. If you need to reach out, main office. Why the New Yorker is ignorant and reserved. Ooh. Ooh, just insult New Yorkers. I'm a New Yorker. Why would you say ignorant and reserved? I'm nearly not reserved and ignorant. No. It's ignorant to even make that statement. But anyway. Main office at bravenpublishing.com. You can reach out to me. That's my email address. My website is bravenpublishing.com, www.braven, B R A V I N, bravenpublishing.com. Uh, we will be on tonight. And when I say we, I mean Sister Regina Poole, Brother Otis Bellinger, and myself. We'll be discussing finances at 8 o'clock, 8 30, and 9 o'clock. You can check us all out. You should also be following them. They're very outstanding and very intelligent people. And we're part of the Building Better Relationships Conference, which is going to be June 4th at Wayne State University. Make sure you mark your calendar. If you're not close to the Detroit area, reach out to some folks who may be. Tell them that they should attend. 
Also, if you want to support, because you can't be there, but you just like to support the idea of building better relationships, reach out to Otis at ODIS at buildingbettermen.org and let him know that you saw the scope and that you're actually interested in supporting. If you can't be there, if you want more information, definitely hit him up. Because if you follow our scopes or you follow all three of us, we have been and will continue to talk about the conference because it is a serious thing. It is a conference based on building better relationships. Regina Poole is an outstanding educator, woman of God, who has, because I'm making an exchange, and when I went to New York, the people don't talk to me when I ask, okay, well, you're speaking to a New Yorker, so you can't make a blanket statement when you allowed a couple people to change your thinking. That's ignorant by itself. So to allow a few people to change your focus on a whole group of people, not smooth. Better ways to do that, my friend. You just say, I didn't like my visit to New York. So you met some New Yorkers who was negative. Okay, you're talking to one who's not. If you want to reach out to have a conversation, main office at bravenpublishing.com. If I can help, I will. And if I can't, maybe I can direct you to whoever it is that you need help with. But not with that attitude. We got to watch what we put out and it reflects what we get back. Got to be positive. Even in a negative time, be positive. It actually attracts other positivity in the murks of all these murky waters. Trust me, it does happen. And again, if you need to reach out, and I do a lot of public speaking when asked. I have a lot on my plate, but if you need me to come somewhere and speak somewhere, we can work it out. Um, but right now, my main focus is graduate school. As I said, I am an author. My latest book, Lukewarm Saint, is inspirational fiction. But I'm not really doing as much promotion on my book right now because I am just focusing on school. Plus, I'm touching some things up on a book. But everything is on my website. And I definitely look forward to hearing from you. And make sure that you share this with your followers. Make sure that you, you know, I appreciate the hearts, by the way. And look out for me on other scopes. Like I said, I'll be on tonight, 9 o'clock. Otis Bellinger will be on 8.30. Regina Poole, 8 o'clock. You need to follow those individuals. And again, do not allow horrible bosses to take such a role in your life that you can't be you. Because in the end, you control you, not the boss. And believe it or not, those bosses are a blessing. They really are. Okay? My name is K.L. Belvin. It has been my pleasure. I thank you. I also thank you guys that I had the block. I appreciate it. You helped me tighten up my game. And if I was disrespectful or offensive to anyone, I apologize. It is not my intention. But if I did, I apologize. 